Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamentals of testing and making you understand about the concepts. We are in the chapter one talking about the basics of software testing and continuing ahead with our same topic that is 1.4, the test process and moving ahead into the next part of it today which is called as test design. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be trying to understand what happens once you are done analyzing the test basis that is set of work products which are going to be used for preparing the testing altogether. Now, of course, in order to prepare the test cases, you need to go through the understanding of the various work products which you will be referring to, and that's what we refer it to as test basis. And when it comes to Given that you have analyzed, you have understood, you have got some test scenarios with you, now you start breaking those test scenarios into the test cases. Now, what is a test case? Test case is a set of instructions to validate a particular functionality which is written for a particular test condition. Now, how do you write test cases? We'll talk about that in our next tutorial and help you to understand that how to write these set of instructions. So generally, the test cases are started at this particular phase called as test design, where we start designing or writing the test cases. Also, to a certain extent, you start prioritizing them as you write them, because you know what are the criticalities of the project, what are the functionalities which you're looking forward to deliver earlier in the life cycle. So you immediately define a priority to it, probably like high, medium, and low, right? We also start preparing the necessary test data to support your test cases. Now, what are test data again? And when it comes to test cases, it's basically to interact with an application and test it. An application and particular function or particular control flow may have certain fields which you have to provide with information. For example, if I'm trying to log in in a particular page, the test case is to enter the username, enter the password, click on the login button. But when it comes to the username and password, we need a value with to insert there, or that's what you call it as the test data. Now, why do we I particularly call it as a test data? Why can't I just call it as a value to be inserted in that field? The reason is not a generic data will be used. The particular specific data will be utilized, no matter what are you testing. Even if you're trying to sign up or create a customer account on a Facebook or LinkedIn, there are some specific standard data and that cannot be generalized. For example, if you're talking about specific country, specific applications, the language matters, the definition to the field matters, the kind of you know people allowed to register like date of birth, their age matters, and the city, country, and a lot many other things will be specific, not generic. And that's where we call it as the test data. And test data has to be prepared to meet the expectation of each and every particular test cases. And at the same time, we will be looking forward to understand that where all the test cases or test data would be required to be prepared. Once you have the play test data in place, parallelly, some of the members can start working on understanding and designing the test environment needs. Now, what is a test environment? A test environment is the setup, the infrastructure, the configuration of a system which is required to test this application. Of course, you might be testing a product, you might be testing an application. It just depends on what type of application are you testing. You might be testing a browser-based application that the configuration is all about the various browsers, their versions, and extensions which are applicable, if any, right? When you talk about a hardcore desktop application, you understand that the environment will be the operating system, talking about the RAM and talking about the CPU, the number of cores, etc. Similarly, if you're talking about a hardcore product, I may not need a particular environment at all. For example, talking about the home appliances, talking about uh, the kind of you know applications which are used in your home, any other product which you are talking about, like microwave oven or anything else. Similarly, when you talk about mobile applications, you talk about the Android, you talk about iOS, you talk about the hardware and software configurations specific to it. Now that's where we need to spend time to understand based on the given requirements, what is the expectations on the environment? That requirement has to be tested in this particular specific environment. So testing team has to establish a required set of environment in order to run the test and evaluate the product. 
because most of the times you miss out certain specific functionalities behavior just because you don't have the right set of environment available with you. So you start uh, designing the test environment at this point of time and also identify the required infrastructure and tools. The infrastructure will be anything else which you're going to manage altogether or the software testing tools which you are planning to use as a part of the process. It could be about test management tool, it could be about test execution tool, it could be about test automation tool or many other different tools which we'll be talking about in the end of our tutorial series when I introduce you to the test tools. So we start identifying the need of these tools and looking forward to them if they are already available or we need to procure them or will that be a commercial tool, will that be a freeware, you start conducting certain POCs to understand and finally decide. Also, you start creating a relationship between the requirements or the parent document and the test cases which you are creating. The relationship is called as the traceability and this traceability should be bidirectional. The bidirectional traceability stands for connecting from both the directions. It could be measured from uh, requirement to test cases or test cases to requirement back. We'll be looking at some of the example traceability matrices when we talk about the test cases at the same time. So we'll be looking forward to understand a deeper dive before we continue ahead in any other tutorial, but understand how what is a test condition, how it is written, what are test cases, how do we write it, and similarly, we'll understand some more examples of these artifacts which we are looking ahead parallelly in our upcoming tutorials. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.